Hi everyone and welcome to part one of a mini part series in which I camp at every single campsite in the Michaux State Forest in Pennsylvania. It is the end of a very long day and the sun is starting to set so I'm going to go ahead and hit the road. So I kind of went to the parking lot yesterday and scouted out the area and there was uh, I think a group of like three people camping in one of the spots. The parking lot has three or four different tent sites I believe. Uh, there also was an RV carrying a horse trailer behind it and uh, they were just leaving. So I'm not entirely sure if I'll be the only one there today or if there'll be multiple people in multiple spots. Um, in which case I'll probably have to talk a bit quieter and won't be able to film quite as much. Um, but we shall see when we get there. So as you guys can see, the sun is just starting to go down. So I'm going to go ahead and get out and start getting everything set up. Okay, everything's out and now comes the fun part. Well, that whole setup took about 23 minutes. Felt like a lot longer. And uh, as you can see, I got a whole bunch of empty sacks over here that all that stuff was in. The good news is uh, with camping about 50 feet from your car, in the morning I can just chuck everything in the back and worry about putting it back in the bags at home. So the sun is officially down and uh, I'd say we got less than an hour of light left. So. I'm going to attempt to get this campfire going, and while I'm at it, also get some wood for tomorrow morning. Okay guys, the wood has been gathered up, and uh, I'm going to try to get this started now. So the last other vehicle has left, and I am now alone. Looks like there is another car turned in here now. So they uh, backed into a spot, and then a guy hopped out with a flashlight for about 30 seconds. Then they hop back in and I'm not sure if they're leaving or not. There he goes again. So in my last video at the uh, Kadokta Mountain Lean To Shelters, I kind of did a review of the Scorchin. Pringles barbecue flavor, and uh, today I have the cheddar flavor, so I'm uh, going to give those a try. It's 
So kind of the same thing as the barbecue. There's a very, very minor spice. I'd say it's probably like half, maybe even less than half of the spice you'll get from normal spicy chips. So again, I think scorching is pushing it a bit. However, they are really good. They literally taste exactly like uh, normal cheddar Pringles. And like they just put straight uh, capsicum or capsaicin, whichever one it is. Um, onto the chip, so it's not really like a flavorful spice, it's kind of just like that fake, like straight up spicy kind of deal. Okay, so as I speak, there is yet another car pulling in here, but uh, I think it's time that we get some dinner going. So uh, I brought this big old can of New England clam chowder, and uh, we're not going to cook on the campfire this time because, uh, well, this is just a whole lot easier. some of this into a bowl. And I had the bright idea of uh, instead of using saltine crackers or uh, the little oyster crackers, whatever you call them, and this, uh, I think I'm going to break up some Pringles. Mix those all in there. Look at that color. taste test here. You can 100% taste the Pringles in this. And I don't mean like the cheddar flavor or the spice. I mean it just tastes like you put the essence of Pringles into it. I, I don't know how to describe it. Maybe it's like the oil the uh, chips were fried in or something but it's just a very distinct taste that you can only really get from them so i'm gonna go ahead and put all of my cookware and food safely in the car here so it doesn't attract any unwanted attention throughout the night okay so the campfire is smoldering out I got everything in the campsite that doesn't really need to be out here put back in the car over there in the darkness and uh, I'm going to fold up this chair and put it in the little corridor here uh, between the actual tent and the cover. Um, I have like my saw and a few other things in that little corridor and uh, you can put your backpack or shoes or something in there. But, uh, let's see, it is probably let me check my watch real quick it's about uh 7 40 right now and uh even though it's quite early it's been dark for quite a while out here and when you're in the dark for so long you just start getting tired regardless of what time you normally go to bed so uh with that being said I'm just gonna put out the fire completely here and i will see you guys in the tent 
Okay guys, I am in the tent now, and uh, it's pretty disorganized in here. Wanted to show you the corridor from inside. So this cover just zips down here, and you can get in. But uh, it just leaves some room for some extra storage. And then you can zip up this. And then, uh, let's see, I guess I'm zipping from this side. We'll unzip that a bit, give us some added ventilation, um, and oh crap, I actually gotta head back out because you have to open these little vents here, um, otherwise your breath will condense on the top of the tent and rain back down on you in your sleep, and that is not nice. These are the vents I was talking about, so you just reach in here, undo the velcro, and this will there's this uh, little rigid piece here. You just bend that, stick it on the velcro on top, and it uh, opens up. And you just walk around and uh, do that from the other side. There we go. Okay, so I'm a bit more organized here, and I'll show you guys the setup. So, since I have the luxury of being able to carry a bunch more stuff in my car to the campsite, I did bring a lot more sleeping stuff than I normally would. So, I have a inflatable sleeping pad here, and I have a another, this is a Coleman self-inflating uh, sleeping pad uh, here on top of each other. And in the winter, you really do either want to have two regular sleeping pads or one winter sleeping pad. I've never actually used a winter sleeping pad. I get by just fine with um, two, and I have used one before, and even then it was uh, bearable. Uh, and then this is a wedge pillow. Uh, I use it at home because I get uh, pretty bad acid reflux sometimes, but uh, I went ahead and added it here because why not? Uh, I have a mummy sleeping bag, which I think I forgot to say in my last video. This is rated for 20 Fahrenheit, and you've heard probably heard this before, but that is a survivability rating, not a comfort rating. Um, on top of that, I have this is like a 40 degree sleeping bag that I unfolded. I'm just going to use this like a blanket, and if need be, I have yet another blanket here uh, to be. Quite honest, I am toasty warm. You can actually see just how red my hand is, and that's not just the camera lighting. Um, I feel toasty warm already, not even in my sleeping bag. So uh, I know the temperature today was 50 during the day, which was quite high for uh, December or January. I mean, um, but it is supposed to drop down to 32, which is what I'm used to um, camping in these past couple times, so um, Anyway, this should be a lot more comfortable of a sleep than I normally have um, I don't know if I'll need them, but I did get these extra large um, 18 hour super warmer packs It's uh, like a big old pack of them for five bucks and then, as always, I got my little Elmer Fudd hat there. I have this ski mask thing, which uh, does kind of help keep your face warm during the night. Although I did wake up feeling like I couldn't breathe <laughs> one time. Uh, and then I got some standard issue DoorDash gloves because I could not find my black gloves. Um, got my 30,000 milliamp hour power bank that I'm going to be charging my phone during the night with. Uh, my trusty tripod, which I'm sure you've seen before. Um, it's just my headlamp attached to it. And I do believe that is everything. So, uh, oh, and I got my two water bottles over there. So anyway guys, I will see you in the morning. Uh, tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up bright and early, make some breakfast, and then I have a five mile hike. I want to get on. Um, I'm not sure what, hopefully I'll wake up pretty early. Um, I do like waking up slightly before the sun comes up when I'm camping. Uh, that way I can clean up camp and get on the go nice and early. And uh, depending on how I sleep, that is my only option because I can't ever sleep all the way through the night. 
But regardless, um, I will see you guys in the morning. It is 6 a.m. and I slept great, at least compared to how I normally sleep when I'm camping. Normally I wake up every like half hour to an hour in the night and today I feel like I woke up maybe every two hours or so. Um, the night started nice and warm. Um, I think the temperatures dropped real fast um, because it did feel like 32 degrees once I got um, far into the night. Definitely didn't feel like too cold to sleep. Um, like when I was wrapped up and everything, I was still nice and warm. Um, I did open one of the hand warmer packs during the night just to try out because I have like 10 of them. Um, and it did work pretty well. I think I put it in my uh, pants pocket because I was laying on my side and then um, halfway through the night I took it out and just kind of slept laying on my back like this with one between my hands. Um, but yeah, overall it was pretty good. I'll put like a little picture of how I slept on the screen from my watch. Um, and uh, yeah, so the uh, plan for today is I'm going to wake up, which uh, I guess I already did, and then uh, get out my camping stove. I'm going to make some breakfast. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and pack up everything. And by pack up, I mean chuck everything in the back of the car and pack it all up at home. Um, and then I'm going to get started on a five mile hike. Um, I filmed a short little video of the hike that I'll put as I'm talking over it here. So basically, I'm going to start out walking down, uh, I believe it's Cold Springs Road, uh, and I'm going to head to the right a little bit, and then I'll find the trailhead, and it just starts this giant loop that uh, kind of goes, um, actually not really sure where it goes, but it goes up somewhere, and then loops back around to the left, and then I'll meet a trail. I actually took um, a shorter trail yesterday, or two days ago now. Um, that contains part of this trail. So the first half will be new to me and the second half I've done before. So should be pretty nice. And uh, yeah, so I'll go ahead and get started on breakfast. So I don't remember if I mentioned it in the tent, but uh, I'm not going to be having a campfire this morning just because uh, I got this stove here, and I do kind of want to get packed up and start the hike pretty early, so I'm uh, just going to be making breakfast and uh, packing up. So to start, I have some uh, coffee I'm going to be making, and uh, I'm just going to boil this water, oh I didn't need that much. Um, then I did pick up this for about five bucks, it's just a little insulated mug so I don't have to drink out of that again. Okay, so that's probably about hot enough. I'm gonna put a little more water in it and uh, make some oatmeal.
And I was planning on having this uh, Stroop waffle thing, but uh, I'm pretty full from the two packages of oatmeal, so I think I'm gonna save this for the hike. Sun's starting to come out. Okay, so not the fastest and uh, definitely not the cleanest camp break, but a camp break nonetheless. So it is about 7.20, which is a little later than I wanted to get going, but uh, that's fine. I got a little day bag here so I don't have to lug around the big uh, backpack. And look at the sunrise over there. So I'm just going to get this coffee loaded up into the car, uh, transfer over some water into my water bottle, and I'll probably bring like an extra one just in case. Got my trekking poles, my knife, um, and uh, it should be good. The ground is completely frozen. We'll see you guys on the trip. So uh, now that it's light outside, you can get a better view of the parking lot here. So this is the T-Berry parking area, site number 21. I realized I didn't mention that earlier, but uh, should be in the top of the description of the video. Um, since it is the winter camping season, only sites 1, 2, 21, and 22 are open. Um, so I'll probably be doing those in uh, the next few videos and uh, I believe the summer sites open up on April 1st um, so this should be about a 25 part series I'd say because there's I think 23 sites and then I'm probably going to do like a multi-day hike to end it off so uh, we'll see when we get there uh, I'm going to move my car over to the um, sign over there, um, that way I'm not blocking the site if anyone else wants to use it. And there's a site here, there, one over there, I'm not really sure if there's one in that corner, but plenty of room uh, for RVs or definitely if you're just car camping or something like that. Very, very icy, very cold. This was muddy yesterday and now it's rock solid. So, uh, yeah, now I will see you guys on the trail. So the uh, beginning of the hike just follows Cold Springs Road right here. It goes past this uh, big cell tower, which is strange because I don't think anyone really gets cell service out here. But the uh, humming of the generator or battery or whatever over there was uh, certainly nice because it was you know, right through the woods from the campsite, so it was just a light hum to uh, help me fall asleep. So uh, I wanted to show you the app I'm using uh, for the trail here. The uh, All Trails app, and uh, as you can see, I have the whole route planned out here. And this route actually isn't something I planned out. It isn't a mapped route. This is from the All Trails community, so someone else hiked this and recorded it on their phone and then posted it so I could find it and I just upgraded to All Trails Pro last night. Um, it's about $30 a year and I think it's well well worth it. Um, you can download maps offline, you can have this map. I like using the satellite map because I can see landmarks more easily but you can basically zoom in on your location and it'll show you exactly where you are. I have um, well right now I have a little bit of cell service, but over at the campsite I had zero service most of the time. And uh, it still tracks me pretty perfectly from the campsite, because I did a test run a couple days ago. But uh, yeah, and then over in the bottom right corner you can see Lifeline. And what that does is you can put one or more emergency contacts, and it will allow them to track your location on the trail as well as uh, 
it'll send them notifications for when you start hiking, when you're supposed to be back if you're running a little late but still on track, and other things like that. So that's uh, pretty neat. And not sure if you need the Pro or not for that, or if you just need internet access or whatnot. All I know is I did a trail uh, two days ago that uh, all I had was one bar 3G and apparently my uh, mom was able to track me completely the entire time so uh, I thought that was pretty cool and uh, just wanted to show you guys. So I do think the map is a little off because I'm guessing that's the trailhead and it shows the trailhead being across from that little driveway there. So uh, we'll see if I can find it. Because if not, I might not be doing this trail. That looks like it. That's good. Yep, this definitely looks like a trail to me. So it looks on the map like I go right here. I'm assuming that leads back to my campsite. A little muddy. worried because I've been going downhill for quite a while now and when you go down on a trail you have to hike back up and it doesn't look like it's stopping anytime soon. There's just hundreds of random pieces of pipe all over the side of this uh, ridge here. I saw one I thought it was just like a drain off pipe because it was half buried, but I've just been there for a while. Is that one standing straight up? Oh, that makes sense. So it's just how they planted the trees. Mystery solved. That's nice. I knew the uphill was coming, and here it is. I'm about two miles in, 45 minutes. It's been uh, uphill for quite a while, but I appear to be approaching the top. Of course, I believe I got to go down there to the base and then climb up another ridge before I'm done, but I'm gonna take a quick water break. Right here would be a great dispersed camping site. I'm not sure if this is one of the trails in the state forest that they allow for that. Um, I'm also not sure if they would ever even know that you were here. Um, but uh, anyway. I mean, I'm assuming that's what this has to be for. I don't know why there would be just a random flat area here if it wasn't. So it appears that somewhere I have gone a little off the trail. Um, so that's, that's really great. Shouldn't have to backtrack too far. And it does actually look like there's a trail going up the ridge here right by that uh, flat area that I talked about a second ago. But I think I'm going to play it safe and walk back up the hill I just walked down. And I will see you guys when I get there. So I am all the way back where I took my little water break about 20 minutes ago. Turns out I'm supposed to take this trail 
not this trail right next to it. <laughs> I think I found a dormant beehive on that tree over there. So it looks like I actually probably could have kept following that one trail and it would have led up here. Um, but I'm going to try not to think about that because it wasn't on the map. Or maybe it was and it just wasn't showing up because I have a specific trail loaded. But uh, I'm definitely on the right trail now. I'm going to follow this little stream up the mountain. So I have reached the very top of this ridge here. As you can see, the trees are a lot shorter. I've got a bit more snow on the ground. Not as much ice. But uh, yeah, I'm about halfway now. I would have been well over halfway if it uh, wasn't for that little turnaround there. But uh, should be pretty easy going from here. I see a uh, mountain bike track, so can't be too hard, right? <laughs> hey, you know like five seconds ago when I said there wasn't as much ice up here? Well, I, uh, I found it all. Now I'm gonna check and hopefully I go that way and not that way. And judging by the arrow, I'm pretty sure it's that way. Pretty sure that's like a Ride along infant car seat you put on the back of a mountain bike. Really hope that turned out okay. I was just curious about how thick this ice is. To be honest, I don't know if I've ever actually walked on ice before. But uh, I'm not going to push my luck because these shoes aren't really waterproof and I don't feel like walking two and a half miles with my feet wet. This way. Okay, so I just met up with the trail that I hiked uh, half of a few days ago. So it should be pretty easy going from here. I believe I have a little over a mile left to go. So, uh... Yeah, I think the trail, right now it's still pretty wide, it's like a multi-use trail. And then somewhere up here, I step off to the left and there is a really narrow foot trail. And uh, I guess I'll see you there. And here is where I step off the main trail and start on the little footpath. I keep hearing deer call out and I'm stopping and looking through the woods trying to see them but haven't been able to catch one yet. As a random Australian once said. Oh wow, it's pretty rocky here, hey. So I am at the road, which means that uh, I'm about five minutes away from the parking lot. I'm going to do a hair reveal, see how bad it is. Wow. Looks like I'm going to be wearing my hat on the drive home. <laughs> and I am back. 
So I am back in the warmth of my car. Uh, all in all, the hike ended up being about 5.6 miles with a total climb of 600 feet. So uh, I'm a little bit tired. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to pause the video, scroll down, and like and subscribe. This is going to be part one of a mini part series. Uh, if you're watching this anytime in the future, uh, I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description. And that should have all the videos of me camping at every campsite in the Michaux State Forest. I will see you guys next time.